So you have, uh, this is a bit of a stretch, but three creatures that live in the lumbar spine. The first is an owl. So first you have these circle-like big owl eyes, which represent the pedicles of the vertebral body. Then you have this linear nose that comes down, which represents the spinous process. Then you have these wing-like flappy projections, which are the, the, the wings of the owl or the transverse processes of the vertebral body. It's a little bit easier to see on a three-dimensional model. So if you were to cut everything back from here backwards, this is namely the posterior arch of the vertebral body, or, or the vertebrae rather, then you'd be left with just two circles basically. And that's because you'd be cutting these cylindrical-like structures of the pedicle off, and then you'd be looking at it like this. Much the same way is with the spinous process. So if you were to be looking at like a pencil, for instance, on, the, on a profile view, it would look like a long linear structure. However, if you were to look at it just from the eraser, it would look like just a dot. So if you look at this from a profile view or a lateral view, it looks like this knife-like projection. But if you turn it, it's more of a linear beak-like shape. And then these transverse processes on the sides, they're very radiolucent oftentimes uh, when you're doing these procedures. You can see them pretty well on our x-ray here and then obviously on our three-dimensional model too. All right, next up is the butterfly of the lumbar spine. So you can see that pretty dang well here. So I'm tracing out the butterfly right now and then we'll go over the components of it. So right here we have the superior articulating process basically on both sides here, inferior articulating process, both sides here, the pars intraarticularis right here on both sides, and then the lamina right here, both sides. It's again easier to see on a three-dimensional model. You have the superior articulating process that articulates with the inferior articulating process of the vertebra above, and the same on this side. So this is the inferior articulating process right here that articulates with the superior articulating process from the vertebrae below. Together, they're called the zygoapophyseal joint or Z joint or facet joint. And then you have the lamina. So it basically forms the roof of your uh, spinal canal or your vertebral foramen right here. And then the pars articularis is this area right on both sides, which bears a lot of clinical significance. The third creature is the Scotty dog, which is best seen in an oblique image and has been covered a lot on the internet. So first we'll go over some lumbar anatomy. So we'll outline some vertebral bodies here. This is not all that lined up. That's why you see kind of the ovoid structures here. This is more lined up. So this is gonna be L5, L4 right here. Five, we said it's here. S1's down here. This space right here would be the intervertebral disc space. And then moving posterior to the vertebral body, you have the pedicle right here. Coming further down, you have the inferior articulate process. And then leading up to the superior articulate process. And then the area between those is the pars interarticularis. Right here, this is the inferior vertebral notch and this is the superior vertebral notch this space in between here is going to be the intervertebral foramen or neural foramen where our spinal nerves come out of and then you can see our needle approaching here and just to give you a view on a three-dimensional model here you can see how the superior articular process lies right here coming all the way down to the inferior articular process i can just pull out right there which articulates with the superior articular process, intervertebral disc space right here, and the neuroforamen right there.